Hello, everybody. This is Ian Beckles, and welcome back to In the Trenches. And uh, I called this podcast, webcast, In the Trenches, because that's where games are won. Our Buccaneers go into Cleveland against a 3-7 and seven Browns team uh, who sold their soul by picking up Deshaun Watson and giving him the biggest guarantee contract ever. They sold their soul. We all know that. Deshaun's coming back this week, uh, ironically, against Houston on Monday night. That should be fun. But our Buccaneers go into Cleveland uh, against a reeling team without their ace at quarterback, three and seven. All right. I'm going to say this our Buccaneer team is not good enough to pencil in a win against anybody in the league except for Houston. All right. We're not that good of a football team. And if you've listened to the, the way I've progressed through these In the Trenches podcasts, I kind of alluded to it last week. Like, okay, we won a game, but did we erase everything we did before that game? All of a sudden, the Bucs are a good running team. All of a sudden, the Bucs are this and that. Not, not, not with one game, okay? This season has not been enjoyable to watch. The Bucs aren't a fun team to watch. We don't have, we don't have near a big play offensively. When was the last time we hit a bomb? Our defense... Uh, our defense gets sacks, but if I ask you who's our best pass rusher, who are you going to say? It's kind of like we're getting sacks, and it's, it's a schematic thing. And that's why I hear people dogging out Byron Leftwich and they're dogging out Todd Bowles. I'm going to tell you, everybody, okay? This is real. What happens on the field is 80% players and 20% play calling, all right? Do I think there should be more creativity? Everybody wants more creativity when you're losing. But it's hard to be creative when you don't do anything well. The Bucks, the only thing the Bucks do well offensively is play action. You can't just play action all game long. It doesn't work that way. And what the Bucks do defensively well, I, I, I'm not sure who, what it is, to be honest with you. So they go into Cleveland. They lose the game. Coming off a bye. Do you remember a couple of years ago when the Bucks won the Super Bowl? Coming off that bye, that was a moment when they hit the switch and everything kind of turned, turned a little bit. Well, it didn't turn yesterday. And if we as Buccaneer fans should be confident going forward, listen, we still have Tom Brady as our quarterback, okay? But if anybody think that that team that played yesterday, or really the team that played all year, is going to win two playoff games, no way. No way. And the NFC is not that damn good. Actually, the NFC stinks, other than a couple teams, okay? So we go Brissette. Jacoby Brissett we're losing to. So the Buccaneers have lost to Jacoby Brissett, Pickett, and there's some other quarterback they love. Uh, I can't think of it right now. Who's quarterback for Carolina? Walker. I didn't know his name, okay? You tell when since when is Tom Brady losing to these schleps like that? When when does that ever happen? Okay. We uh, some of our stars are not stars. Mike Evans didn't get enough targets yesterday. To me, he looked wide open all game long. And Tom Brady and Mike Evans, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if one of them didn't invite the other one to Thanksgiving. They don't seem to be in cahoots right now. Right now, Tom Brady and Godwin, they got something going on. And it goes back and forth. That's the way football goes. But to me, Mike Evans looks frustrated out there. Tom Brady missed him a couple, three times in that game, which would have been a difference maker. The last drive, he missed him on a deep ball, which would have probably ended the game. And it just... There's an issue out there, okay? I, I liked what I saw from uh, Rashad White, but for God's sakes, when you give the guy the ball 18 times to get 64 yards, you know, give it to him more. Let's get more. Run the football. The Bucks win when we're, 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 we're balanced, and that's most football teams. I'm not jumping on Byron Leftwich. I'm not. I just don't think our offensive line is great. We're not that talented around Tom Brady. Who's our tight end? Cameron Brait? Cameron Brait can't even block, okay? So he's not really our tight end. He's another wide receiver. We don't have a tight end. We don't have a tight end. Well, okay, so how much better is Kansas City than the, than the Bucks offensively? They got Kelsey or the Raiders with Waller. Or we can keep on going, San Francisco. We have no tight end at all. Nobody. If I ask you who our best pass rusher is, it's Todd Bowles and his scheme. It's hard to live and die with schemes. 
It's hard. People pick up schemes. And when it comes down to the nitty gritty and the Buccaneers need a pass rush with four guys, they never get it done. Not this year. They just don't get it done. Vita Vea, who I believe is almost leading the, lead, the, the, the team in sacks, that's your best pass rusher? A 360-pound Samoan kid is your best pass rusher. And Vita Vea, I like Vita Vea, the football player. This year, he's not getting off blocks. I don't know why it is. I don't know how many times I've seen him locked up and him not even reaching his arm out to make a tackle. It just doesn't look the same this year for some for some reason. We didn't stop, we didn't stop the run yesterday. I mean, it just... You give up a 100-yard rusher to Chubb, who does it often, okay? But that's what the Bucks used to depend on. Used to depend on Brady making those throws. Used to depend on the Buccaneers' defense at least stopping the run. And then you go from there. The Bucs had seven three and outs. Seven three and outs. I mean, that's the Jets with Zach Wilson as a quarter, as a quarter. That's them, not the Buccaneers with Tom Brady. Seven three and outs, you don't win games like that. And if the Buccaneers would have won that game yesterday, my narrative would have been just about the same. I don't think I would I, I would have changed at all. And the Bucs just aren't good enough for me to look at the rest of that you know, schedule and say they're going to win or they're going to lose. They're not good enough for me to say anybody left on that schedule is a guaranteed win. The Saints are up next, Monday Night Football. Saints, who always have the Bucks number, just lost yesterday 13-0 uh, to, I think it was uh, San Francisco. You know, it's not, the, it's not the worst thing in the world. You don't want to get shut out, obviously. But... The Saints ain't the same, but you're going to just pencil that win in? Go ahead on. Go ahead on. Once again, the Bucks lost to the Steelers, the Panthers, and the Browns. Those three teams ain't going nowhere for Christmas or the holidays. Nowhere. The Buccaneers are going to go somewhere for the holidays. You know why that is? Because the NFC South may be one of the worst divisions ever put together. Unfortunately for the Buccaneers, seriously. It's fortunate that the South sucks so bad or else it would be turmoil here. Can you imagine Tom Brady out of the playoff run? I don't know if you want that. That's not a good look. And for everybody, I have people telling me being negative. Well, listen, you don't think I want the Buccaneers to win? You know what the reality of everything that's happening right now? Okay, this is the reality of it. The Bucs gave up 176 yards rushing. Who does that and wins? The Bucs had nine penalties. Who does that and wins? They were four for 15 on third down. Vita Vea. Knicks. Where are they? Akeem, Akeem Nix is who was, uh, took the place of Dominican Sue, who I see playing with Philadelphia and actually making plays. I, I just, the, the players aren't making, they're not making plays. JTS, Joe Tryon, Shreyanka. My boy Tony Mayberry, as we sit there watching the game, he goes, why, do you, why are you always on him? And I go, you always, I always pick a guy. I always pick a guy that everybody else thinks is good and I know they're not. JTS, and if he, if he was sitting across from me, I would say, you ain't good. And he was, what, what, what? You know why you're not good? Because you don't make no goddamn plays. Michael Parsons plays your position. Aiden Hutchinson plays your position. A lot of guys who were drafted this year play your position and are making plays every week. Not only is JTS not making plays, I'm telling you now, and do yourself a favor if you think I'm talking a bunch of shit right now. Go back and watch the game. Go back and watch the first drive. They went right at JTS. They didn't block him on a misdirection play. They didn't block him because they knew he has no instincts. He runs down inside, the linemen run out there, and it ends up three guys on one defender. That's because JTS doesn't know what, the, what, what he's doing. He doesn't know what he's doing. And on that first reverse touchdown, Jacoby Brissett went out there and decleated Antoine Winfield Jr., which you don't want, really want to see. But you don't want to see a team drive down the first drive at home, score a touchdown. You don't, you don't win many of those games. Now, I, they said a stat during the game. The Browns lost seven straight games when scoring the first TD. And they broke that streak yesterday against the Buccaneers. So there's just, I, I would like for there to be a lot to 
fall back on and say, well, this is why we're going to start to win, but there's not. Not not for me. I'm seeing it, and it, it just it doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. And real talk, I still think they win the division. I think they still make the playoffs. I, don't, I wouldn't put a nickel on them making any noise. But F around and lose to the Saints. F around and lose to the Saints. San Francisco's next. And I don't want to hear about they won't lose to the Saints. Bet your house on it. From what you've seen this year, bet your house the Bucks will lose to the Saints. The Bucks could easily lose to the Saints. If the Saints beat the Bucks next week, is anybody going to call that an upset? Not me. No way. Because this Bucks team just, it's just, it ain't right. It ain't right. It doesn't look right. It doesn't feel right. It's not fun to watch. But you could switch things in a week. You really can. I thought they were beginning to switch things, and then they fall back into what they did yesterday. Expectations were high. Results are low. So Buccaneer fans, they have to be disappointed. I hope you are. I hope you're disappointed because that ain't it. It just ain't it. Now, I want to say well, well wishes going out to Tristan Wurst. And I actually had some notes. I was going to start gassing up Tristan Wurst. I'm, this is real. I had these notes done before he got hurt yesterday. Tristan Wurst had 416 offensive snaps, most in the NFL, before yesterday. Best pass blocking right tackle I've ever seen. Ever. And I've been, I'm 55. Played in the league for nine years in the 90s. Watch all the football. Love football since birth. Christian Wurst, Tristan Wurst, the best pass blocking right tackle I've ever seen. Now, the way it looked yesterday, and they didn't replay it, I thought for sure it was a compound fracture or something, or just leg foot was going the wrong way. I guess, you know, you saw the play, and I rewound it on YouTube, and a defender jumped up and came back down on his ankle. What it is, it's a high ankle sprain. Everybody's going, oh, it's okay, it's a high ankle sprain. Okay, well, you never had one. And sometimes the longevity, like not just next week, I'm talking about long, long term. You'd rather a break. A high ankle sprain, listen, listen, never goes away. If I step funny off this carpet that I'm standing on right now, I'll sprain my ankle. And now he's had two severe ankle sprains. They're going to start coming up. Once you start having bad ankle sprains, they don't ever go away. So it's one of those things where towards the end of this year, if the Buccaneers are out of things, look for them to start making some decisions about their future. And Tristan Morse may be one of those decisions. You never know. I just hope it's Tom Brady doesn't become a decision. You saw there in Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers, they may yank his ass any second because that looks god-awful over there. But then again, who are we to throw stones because uh, it doesn't look all that great over there. But then again, you could be in Denver. I don't think I've ever seen anything so hideous as Denver who this will go down as the worst trade in the history of trades in the sports since they gave away their first and second the next two years, which is going to be a third pick. And Denver sucks. His, his Russell Wilson's own offensive teammates are blowing up on him. The defenders are blowing up on him. You know what they're tired of? Let's go, guys. Nobody wants to hear that shit no more on defense. If they just scored 17 points, they'd be like 8-2 and two or 8-something. and something. Get out of here. Nobody wants to hear Russell Wilson and his $40 million mouth saying shit about nothing when you're the reason why they're losing. So good riddance to them, but I tell you what, John Elway and the Broncos are going to be in trouble for a while. It's going to be a while coming up. And the Bucks will be in trouble for a while, too. They don't mess, figure out a way to beat the Saints on Monday night, so let's hope they can figure that out. So next week in the trench is going to be coming probably on a Tuesday morning since the game is on Monday, and uh, let's just hope for the best. You lose this one, we'll start talking about next year. If you lose this one, the season's over. I don't care. So we won't win the South if we lose this one. If you lose to the Saints, you're not good enough to beat to beat to win anything. No way. No way. Let's hope for the best. Anybody wants to hit me up email wise, it's Ian Beckles at radioinfluence.com. And uh, make sure you listen to my other podcasts as well. Uh, this is my way to vet now, because I'm not on the radio. Hopefully that'll be changed real soon. But I appreciate you guys and gals tuning in every single week. And let's hope that we have a, a victory Tuesday uh, next week, because I'm getting tired of this losing. Everybody have a wonderful week, and please be safe. Peace out.